Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in this video, we're gonna be creating a completely custom cursor effect like this, where your cursor is completely replaced by a div or an image in Oxygen using a little bit of CSS and some JavaScript. So let's jump directly into the builder and get started. Here I have the same exact design you just saw, but without any of the custom cursor stuff set up. Now the first thing we're gonna wanna do is create our cursor. So we're just gonna use a div here. So let's drop a div in, and I'm gonna move this up to the top of our design uh, so that it's a little bit more visible. And we're gonna go ahead and add a class called Custom Cursor. And let's drop that in. Now there's a couple of things we're gonna need to do. First, we need some custom CSS to override Oxygen's default 80 pixel width and height for divs in the builder preview, which is just there to make it so you can still drop things into divs that have no width or height. So we're gonna say min width, zero pixels, important. And don't ever use important if you can avoid it. It's generally a last ditch effort and because we know exactly what we're doing here and why we're doing it, it's okay to use in this case. So we'll do min height, zero pixels, important. And that's just gonna give us a div that behaves a little bit more like we expect because we don't want it to be 80 by 80. So then let's just go in the size and spacing area and set our width to like 32 by 32, actually 48. We wanna go a little bit bigger, 48 by 48. And then let's go to borders because we want our cursor to be a circle that kind of floats along with our cursor because most of these I've seen, the uh, custom cursor doesn't actually move immediately when your cursor moves. There's a little bit of easing or a little bit of lag there. Not sure why that is, but that's the way the effect works. So we're gonna to try to replicate that. So to make this thing a circle, we're going to give it a black border with like, I don't know, two pixels maybe, solid. And then we're gonna set the border radius to 50%. And now we have the basically image, even though it's a div, the visual representation of our cursor that we wanna have instead of the normal mouse cursor. And the final thing to do with this is gonna to be to go to layout and set it to position absolute. And I'm just gonna put it at the top left corner so that we know exactly where to find it. Now the rest of what we need to do will be done in a code block, so let's add a code block. And let's get rid of the PHP and HTML, which we do not need in this case. And we're gonna jump in to the JavaScript portion first. So what we need to do is we need to add an event listener to the window, so we'll do window.addEventListener. And the event we wanna to listen to, or listen for rather, is called mouse move. And then we're gonna run a function there once we detect that that event has occurred. So this is where we're gonna do all our stuff. Now, the way that I've done this is not the only way to do it. And again, there are probably UI, UX, and maybe performance implications of this. So be mindful anytime you're doing something that's a little out of the box that you're gonna have some trade-offs potentially. Um, but this is kind of the simplest way I found to do this without including a whole third-party library or some really convoluted script. This kind of gets the job done with very, very minimal amounts of code, which we like because we don't wanna add a bunch of lines of code just for a, a silly floating cursor. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is because we don't want this, uh, this stuff running in the builder while we're like, you know, designing the page or whatever. Uh, we're gonna do if window.angular, which is true if we're in the builder, will return, uh, which gets us out of this script uh, and doesn't execute anything after that return statement. Now we're gonna set up a couple of variables. We're gonna do var mouse x, and that's gonna be equal to e, which E is the variable that holds all of our event data. Since we have our little uh, E up here, we know E dot page X is gonna give us our uh, X position of our mouse. Uh, and then we need to deduct 24 pixels from that. So we're gonna do the same thing on the Y, var mouse Y equals E dot page Y. And Y is the up and down axis. X is left and right, Y is up and down. Minus 24 pixels, which is uh, the reason it's 24 is because our uh, 
circle is 48 by 48. So we're basically moving it back up and left by half in either direction to make sure it's centered on the mouse. Now we're gonna add another variable called cursor, which is just gonna be document.querySelector, and that's that cursor class. We're looking for that class that we added to our div. That gives us a variable we can use to manipulate that div. Now we're gonna use a set timeout because we wanna be able to have a very little bit of delay between the time our cursor actually moves and when our custom little div or image moves. So we're gonna use set timeout to achieve that and it's gonna run a function and in that function we're gonna set cursor, which is our variable that is basically the object of that div with the cursor class, uh, style.css text and here, we're gonna add our transition. Now, because we're gonna plug in a bunch of uh, some variables in here, there's an easy way to do this, but first let's complete our timeout. So set timeout has a function, and then after the function, we're gonna add our actual delay that we want. And if we make this a big number, then the cursor is not gonna move for quite a while um, after we've actually moved our mouse. So we wanna make it a smaller number to give ourselves a little bit of that floaty feeling uh, to where that cursor, the, the circle is kind of dragging along with our mouse movements, but it's not actually immediate. Uh, it gives it a different feel. So let's go back up here and we're gonna form this uh, CSS string. Uh, so let's just write it out as plain CSS first, which we're gonna do transform and again, animating the position of an element using margins and stuff is not a good call. We're gonna use transforms because that tends to be more performant. We're gonna use the translate 3D transform, and that accepts three values, which would be the X, the Y, and the Z, which we don't wanna transform it on the Z, so we just put zero. Now, the reason I wrote this in with static values is because when I'm concatenating strings, I find it very confusing to do it on the fly. It's much easier for me to have hard-coded values in and then just replace those hard-coded values with my variables or whatever. So we're just gonna add some quotes there to escape that string, some plus signs, and then we can put our variable between the plus signs. So this is gonna be the X, so it needs to be mouse X. And then we'll do the same thing over here. We're just replacing that number, not the, not the unit, the PX, that's gonna stay. Uh, we don't have that in our variable, so that needs to remain in the string. And then this one's gonna be mouse Y. Now, just because I like to test as I go, we'll click apply code. No errors, that's a good sign. Uh, let's jump to the front end and see what happens if we move our cursor around. And currently nothing, and the reason that is, is our uh, class is not cursor at all. I used the wrong class here. So it's gonna be, what do we call it? Uh, let's go over here and click our div, which we made our custom, it's custom dash cursor, of course. So we'll go back to the code block. And again, errors like this happen when you're coding and it's always good to just take a closer look at what you've done and find usually the really silly mistake that you've made. So custom dash cursor, save. And now we should get an effect. Yeah, so now that's kind of tracking along with our mouse, okay. So this looks pretty good, but we have a z-index problem that's kind of hiding behind things, and we can still see our default cursor. And most of the time when I see this effect, you can't see the default cursor, so we're gonna hide that. So let's go back over here and we're gonna do some CSS. Now some of this can be done directly on the cursor element itself, like the z-index for instance. We can go over here to advanced and go to layout and just set the z-index to some higher value. And that's gonna work pretty good. Now what we wanna do is we want to hide the default cursor, which we can do with a couple of lines of CSS in our code block. So we'll go back to our code block, go to CSS, and we're gonna do HTML. And in there, we're gonna say cursor None. Again, there may be um, some things to consider when turning the cursor off for the HTML element. That's something worth looking into if you're implementing this on a real website. We'll go on now and we're gonna go ahead and hide our cursor in the builder because we may not want it in our way. So body.ng-scope means it's this CSS rule is only gonna work in the builder. Custom cursor, we're just gonna set it to display none which hides it out of our way when we're working in the builder. 
And then finally, one thing we want to do, custom dash cursor, is we want to set our custom cursor to pointer dash events none because otherwise it's going to be getting in the way of clicking things. So let's save that and let's look on the front end. And here we have our magical floating cursor. It's over the top of other things. We can still click stuff um, and it kind of moves along with our mouse as we move our mouse up and down. Now this is pretty cool and it has kind of the floating effect that we see uh, when this is present on other sites. But if you want to take your website to the next level, here's what we can do. We can go to uh, our builder, grab our cursor div, go to advanced background. We're going to browse for an image, select it. And this is actually an animated GIF, which will add that extra little bit of pizzazz that most websites are lacking. And we're going to set the background size to contain no repeat. And then let's go get rid of our borders because we don't really need those anymore. So we're just going to set that to none. Now let's take a look on the front end and you'll see that we have this incredible flame that kind of tracks with our cursor instead of that boring circle. So this is really going to just spice up your website a bunch, especially if you want to make your website look like GeoCities or Angel Fire. This is the way to do it. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that is how to create a fancy cursor replacement in Oxygen with a couple of lines of JavaScript and CSS. Thank you very much for watching.